I'm a consultant interventionist at Freeman Hospital uh, and an honorary professor at Newcastle University and an honorary professor with the Apollo Group of Hospitals. Great to know you. So, so what makes you feel motivated to be a speaker in such conferences? So the great motivation is for me to be up to date. So when I come to be a speaker and I'm invited, the subject matter I feel comfortable with, but it makes sure that I am up to date and I let the audience know a critique of all of the data and that helps me to be up to date and it helps the audience to be up to date. And it's a real challenge for me to be able to do that. And when it goes well, it's a real pleasure. That's really nice, sir. So how do you balance your clinical practice with upgrading with the recent developments and trends in the cardiology? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's always a difficult situation to do that because the clinical practice is has no limits. It keeps demanding much from you. But in order to be efficient and provide the best level of care, you have to be up to date with the latest trial uh, evidence and also observational studies from your own practice. So it's very important that the three go hand in hand. Your clinical practice that is updated by randomized clinical trials, and then you audit your own practice to see that you are maintaining the standards that the trials have predicted. So that is the way to do it. And of course, you have to find time to deliver the clinical practice, to read the trial evidence, and to do audit of your own practice. It's really great to know. So we have one more question, like with the recent advancements and the technology advancement in healthcare, like AI in healthcare, like how do you think like uh, they should be upgraded with the clinical practice, like future of the interventional cardiology will be? Yes, I mean, that's a very difficult question to answer at the moment because uh, artificial intelligence in medicine as a whole is in its infancy. And over the several years, AI is essentially about big data. And it's about collecting big data, good data, and then putting that into a computer uh, algorithm and then allowing the computer algorithm to analyze the big data that helps us as physicians and patients to get the optimal treatment. So at this moment in time, where artificial intelligence can help is in the research field, collecting big data, telling us about outcomes uh, in real world practice. And this is something that we're working towards both in the Europe and in the US. But I think to answer your question, what examples are there at this moment in time outside of research, we're at the infancy. And I think it's not coming yet, but in five, 10 years from now, we will be able to deliver precision medicine for each patient as opposed to now where we deliver population level medicine, we will be able to deliver precision medicine. That's really great to know. So we have one last question, like what do you think the future of interventional cardiology will be down the line? Yeah, so I, I think we are going through the golden era of interventional cardiology. I think over the next 10, 15, 20 years, medication will be developed that will reduce the role of coronary intervention. Okay, I think structural will continue to rise, but coronary intervention, because already we are seeing that with the use of injectable PCSK9 inhibitors, we are seeing the regression of plaques. With the evaporate trial, with the IPE, Icos of Pantethal, the highly purified fish oil, we are seeing a reduction in plaque volume also. So I think over the next several years, we will be able to regress plaque. And once that happens, the role of interventional cardiology, certainly for stable angina, will reduce, but maybe for acute coronary syndromes will continue, but then we will be able to address acute coronary syndromes because there's a lot of uh, work now on reducing inflammation, which can trigger plaque rupture. So over 20 years, I think a significant reduction in coronary intervention, that's my prediction.